Hey guys, thanks very much for tuning in today's video. What we're gonna be covering is my five must-have settings on your camera. Whether it be a new DSLR, whether it be a DSLR you already own, these are the settings I tend to find help me on a day-to-day -day basis and I really hope it helps you out too. So, let's get started, shall we? So the first thing that I'm going to talk to you about is going to be your focus area. Now generally cameras tend to have about four, three or four different focus areas you can choose from. For me, I tend to stick between the wide area focus or the spot metering focus. So the wide area focus, you'll notice in your camera specs will be focus points. This is how many focus points in your entire image you can pick from and this allows the camera to try and automatically select exactly what the best focus point for your image is. The second focus mode I usually tend to go to is a spot metering mode. This is very, very handy in a composition when your subject is off to the far left or the far right and you don't want anything else to be in focus so therefore you know they're gonna be at that exact spot. You can just move it along your camera, select it and you're done. Easy as. My second settings I'm gonna to talk to you about is your focus mode settings. So not your focus area, but your focus mode. So the two settings I kind of jump between with is AFS and AFC. Both of these settings are autofocus. However, AFS is very handy for photography because it's the one shot, one focus mode, bing, you're done, that's all you need. And AFC is continuous focus, which is very handy for video because with that, you're then gonna be tracking a subject that could be moving or like if you're gonna be moving yourself, this allows your camera to try and figure out the best continuous focus mode for the subject that you're tracking. I know on the Sony cameras, you've got your DMF focus mode, which allows you to automatically focus, but then adjust by just turning the focus ring and it'll stick at that once it's set. The other mode as well is full on manual focus. However, if you're wanting to go down this route, there's another setting here that I'm gonna recommend for the next one. So setting number three is gonna be peak metering. Now what this does, this highlights on your camera which points of the picture are gonna be in focus. You're gonna see a color highlight around your subject or your, not even your subject, just like your landscape or wherever it is that you're taking a photo. You can select different colors usually, especially on the Sony cameras, you get like blue, yellow, red, and white. Um, I tend to go for red because it's the most under, it's the most noticeable item and a lot of the time I don't really shoot bright red subjects. I mean, unless we're gonna be in the studio, yeah, you're not really gonna do that. So I definitely recommend setting up your peak metering. And this is also very handy in manual focus because it allows you to see exactly where you're going, going to adjust uh, for your focus point, but it's also very handy even in autofocus because there's sometimes your camera can get mixed up. For example, uh, in a studio shoot recently, I had the subject looking to their left-hand side. I wanted to focus on the right eye, but instead my camera thought, oh, all right, yeah, no, he's focusing on the left eye there and did that. And I took the image, didn't even look at the peak metering, was an idiot for doing so. However, hundreds of other images, <laughs> it was fine in the end. So the fourth setting we're gonna talk about is gonna be regulating your ISO. Now your ISO is basically fake light that you would like to call inside your camera. Um, if you up your ISO to say about 6400, 132,000 or whatever, like you can up it, up it, up it. And what this does is your fake light in your camera is trying to bring up the shadows and bring in inf more information into the camera. However, the higher the ISO gets, the noisier and the greenier the image gets. That's basically because the camera can't handle how dark the room is. So I tend to, what you can do is you can actually in your auto ISO, you can regulate what the minimum and what the maximum is gonna be. Now I tend to kind of jump between 3200 and 6400, um, especially well, especially in like darker rooms and darker situations. However, if I'm in a very quite bright room, I literally will max, like allow the max to only go to about 400, which is kind of at the point that no noise is gonna be in the image. And on a side note, recently in the studio shoot, I just manually set it at 100 because you're in a controlled environment, so why not? <laughs> and it was fantastic. No noise, no grain, it was amazing. And finally, the last setting that I'm gonna talk about, and this is something I really, really wish I knew years and years ago, and it wasn't until I got my Sony A6000 that I actually realized I've been taking images, well, I've been saving images, very incorrectly for about eight years, seven years. I'm, I pretty much blame the fact is I never thought I had enough room on my SD card for this. And this is raw image format. And Andy, this one's for you because you, you were a little bit confused when I asked you the other day, oh, did you take that in raw? And you went, what? So raw images. 
What this format is, is uncompressed images. And what this allows you to do in post-production is bring up the shadows, bring up the blacks, reduce the highlights, reduce the exposure, and it allows you to still have all the information that was captured there in that image. If your image is compressed into JPEG, you're gonna lose information within the photo, which is not what you want at all. However, I do recommend in a situation where you're not quite sure how the image is gonna turn out, that if instead of overexposing it and blowing out the image and trying to save the information from reducing the highlights, the, the chances of it are gonna be slim in comparison to underexposing your image and bringing up the shadows. When you bring up the shadows, you, there's more detail to be saved in the image that way. Highlights generally don't tend to have as much information saved. Don't ask me why, that's just the way it is. I might have to have a look into that for a future video. So thanks very much for watching my video, guys. Hopefully this kind of helped you out if you're a newbie to photography or if you've just never delved into your menu settings at all in your camera and you're quite curious as to what does what. Uh, drop a comment below it in case there's a setting that you think that's quite a nice wee trick up, the, up your camera sleeve that you, I've maybe missed here. Uh, in the future, I wouldn't mind doing another one about your camera modes between shutter priority, aperture priority, and full on manual modes and what, which one does what. And um, if you're interested in that, let me know. Uh, like the video below, subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you in the next one.